So welcome back everyone. So today I want to share with you uh, what I've been working on uh, yesterday. It's a, um, it's a shave horse. It's a tool that I've been needing uh, for a long time and been putting off making and I just jumped in and thought I would do it really quickly. So before I show you, we get too close, I, I, I want to preface that this was a very rushed job. Uh, not to make excuses, uh, but that in combination with um, using green timber, I literally milled this timber on the sawmill and in eight hours it became this. So it's, it's got a lot of moisture in it, it's moving a lot, it's, just, it's, not, um, it's not as nice as I would have liked to it to be. It's been very challenging getting glue to set up because of the moisture in the wood, but I had to have it and um, it, it, this is what we got. So I'll bring you in close show you how everything works. Now we're three quarters of the way done. Um, I didn't video any of this. I just was in too much of a hurry, but today we'll video the, 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 the more in, most interesting part. I'll bring you along for that. So let's bring you in close. I'll show you the features and um, kind of what I came up with. So if you don't know what a shave horse is, just go online, watch a video. You'll see what it's used for. It's a very ancient tool. Um, so this is uh, starting at the back. So I decided to go with a three-legged, uh, design because it's uh, I'll be using it outside and it's less, much less likely to wobble. A three-legged stool won't wobble. And I use three different species of, of wood in here. We've got two types of hardwood and then all of this, the main frame and the body is all from Douglas fir. The, um, the seat here is red oak um, and that is on a sliding system here so I can adjust it for the size of work or the size of operator. They can move it forward and back, whatever you want. Lots of, lots of different options there. And I might even upholster this with a little bit of leather. When I put this together and had everything planed, it was so, it was so, so good. I spent so much time on it and now it's, uh, you know, it's drying and twisting, but that's the way it is. So uh, I was hoping not to use any big hardware like this, but I just had no choice. The glue wasn't setting up. It was twisting on me. There's a lot, a lot of joint, a lot of fittings going in here. Um, to bring all of this detail of it together, but it, I, it's, it's, it, looks, it looks okay. Um, I use that 5 8 bolt to pull everything in, but uh, I do like the, uh, I wanted the, the back end of it to all kind of match up and, and line up and, and have that cool look. And it, 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 I'm pretty happy with that. Here you can see how the seat, the seat has a cleat on the bottom. This is a red oak. I, didn't, I think I mentioned that already. Let's see it on there and then of course there. So there was some serious math going on here. It pushed my limits to figure that out. What I ended up doing is cutting it, cutting that um, compound miter on the bandsaw and then taking the piece, flipping it over and putting it in here. So when we, when we tightened, I, I had a taper on there. You can't tighten a bolt with a taper. So we had to put those on there. So we had two flat surfaces to, to uh, tighten that up. Everything full dimension, two by, full two inches thick uh, on the whole thing. Here you can see the front, it's just a single leg. Again, full dimension, two inch, Douglas fir, green as green could be, but I think now that I've got it all kind of, <laughs> I've, got, I've, I've, I've forced it to submit, so hopefully it won't move too much more. So here's the interesting bit here. So this is a, um, an adjustable, I'll bring it down here in a minute, but this is the workstation right here. This is where you're going to, I'm primarily going to use this immediately for making um, pegs for timber framing. And it's the groove on there. So all of this, everything that has to do with the, uh, the, um, the mechanical portion of it is all solid hickory. It's full two inches thick, all hickory. Um, the can or the, the, the paw uh, for the lock is all hickory and that's for durability. And so what I need, you know, depending on what I'm doing, I, I, I'll need to adjust this work table. Um, and I didn't, you know, and also if Jack wants to use it, you know, we can adjust it down, adjust it down for him so it's more suitable to his size. So it just get, get, gives options and a good solid hard wood that's gonna last a long, long time. Everything is hinging off of these um, uh, oak dowels. So those um, tie in the base here. This is going to be base. This needs to be really strong because it's gonna. It's get, there's another hinging uh, mechanism that's gonna go and clamp down on top of this hickory table. So this needs to be pretty, pretty secure there. But um, that's what I come up came up with. So let me put it on the ground and I can kind of demonstrate a little bit better how that works. So to use the shave horse. Uh, Essentially, you, you sit here and, and, of course, we can adjust the seat uh, to whatever we want. I'll probably have it in the more rearward position here. 
And then we can adjust, you can see here, we can adjust our workstation. But when I left this last night, this, this pawl in here was, was free, but the wood has twisted and moved in the night. It's a little bit tight, but that's okay. It's, it doesn't really matter. It will loosen up over use. But a pretty good solid uh, workstation here. So what we're, what we're gonna be making here today is, is the rest of it. So there's a, there'll be two long bars. Actually, I think I had them cut. I can, maybe I can demonstrate here. Oh, this has been a lot of work. Everything rough cut, I had to hand plane everything. I, it was, took a lot longer than I was expecting. These dowels here will be trimmed flush. So basically what we're gonna have here is we're gonna have a, um, this is gonna be a lever that hinges off of this, that, that portion there. And as we push it, as we push with our foot on the treadle, it'll come down and clamp against our work. So it, we're gonna, primarily gonna use a draw knife for something like this. So imagine we want to take a, um, a one inch oak dowel and we want to um, draw it down to a point for, for uh, draw boring timber framing. We'll put it on there, push on, push on the treadle, which will hit hinge tight against this, and then we can draw against it. That's why it was, it was, it's so important to have this tight and secure or big, pretty beefy so I can exert the force on there that I need to do. So we'll have to, uh, let's, let's go ahead and we'll get started uh, building the rest of this and should, I don't think we had too much more to go today. So this is primarily what we're going to be working on today is our supports. And I've got those ripped off. Those are full two inches thick, so they should be plenty strong. I considered doing the, making these out of hardwood, uh, but the fact that they're so they're so big, I think that will be okay. So we got some notching to do, and then we'll build it. First thing we need to do is is uh, get it smoothed out because it's rough cut from the table or from the sawmill. I'm constantly amazed by just how quick and efficient a sharp hand plane can be. Look at that, there's, there's before. See all the saw marks in it? There's after. Just a few simple strokes. And the byproduct of it is it keeps you super fit. One detail I like on pretty much everything I build is I like clean, sharp edges. I don't like quarter, quarter rounds. I don't like when someone takes a sander and rounds everything off. And yeah, you know, it just, to, to me, it just doesn't, it looks, to, look, it just looks amateurish. But I can't have a hard edge on it like this because they're too fragile. As soon as you touch it or ding it, uh, it, it will break off. So one thing that I've done on this and I've been doing is, is just using this small block plane. It's just holding it at a 45. Whoops. And running two passes down each side, each corner. And you can see here what it gives you. Here's the wood left over. It just gives you this little tiny, nice little bevel. It doesn't look too much. I mean, it's subtle. You don't really hardly even see it, but you can definitely feel it. It's uh, not so sharp. It's more comfortable to the touch and it gives the, the edge a little more durability. So I got the planing done and the holes drilled in it. Now we just need to cut these notches here for the foot treadle.
So the whole treadle linkage is going to hinge off of this. This is a piece of 5 8 threaded rod, 3 8 excuse me, 3 8 threaded rod. That's why this piece is so, so strong. Just kind of dry fit everything and make sure that we've got our geometry correctly. I see a problem here. Those dowels, forgot to cut those dowels off. Let's cut those off here so we can see what we're doing. 